thing, right? You know, colleague, there is one edge that true gravity, if they spotted it and researched it now, especially after yesterday's game. I mean, they should have. Everyone was watching that I mean, game. Let's be realistic. That's true, that's true. Because MYS but, and Unite Holic, like, but, they came to look at it. And I mean, not just that, even against Talent Pierce, there's also an additional form, right? If true gravity is able to pick up that very, very smart, minor details, the fact that, yes, Unite Holic is a team that has a lot of policies, a lot of tactics. So, <laughs> let's introduce our two teams for this next upcoming matchup True Gravity versus Unite Holic. We have Zeshal, Melon, oh. Akul, Vulcan, and Duck. Whereas on the side of Unite Holic, we have Wafu, Betchen. Okay, we, we're gonna. Go straight to the team stats here. Oh yeah, we have Betcha, DLR, Mame, Yupono, and of course Waf. Thanks, team Leonard. Captain. No worries, I always have your back, lovely Denali. But of course, this is going to be the team stats here for Team True Gravity, as they hold their own to try to find a way to break the chink of the armor of Unite Holly. But very impressive stats coming up for them as well. Very impressive stats, especially after their match against E Arena earlier today. Mm -hmm. So they did manage to finish that series 2-1. to one. Now, they are moving in with a high, an emotional high. They yes. just won their first series. They're now going up against a Goliath of a team in Unite Holic. I hope this mentality is going to be able to push things through for them because Unite Holic is a whole monster of their own. Yes. Now, there is a pretty big difference between the two teams when you look at their stats, okay? Because the if you want to look at the averages, you know, but if it's not, then... <coughs> Is, does this mean Mame's playing this like support Serena? Is that what he's trying to do? Because normally Mame, he's either playing the defender oh, for the no. team or support. Oh no, I'm sorry. DLR can still actually still go to the mid lane. He still can actually go in with the Kramer as well. Leafion in the lane itself is actually pretty destructive against your opponent. Team, right? your, your yeah. yes. And there's a lot of options for them to really tag around. You've got that late game, you got that mid game transitioning as well. Early game might be a little bit slow since you do have the, both the Sobble and and, uh, and the Dragonair as well. As see, both Pokemon requires multiple evolutions here. A lot of ESP to really climb things up here. But with the Hoopa here, it's going to be able to help us secure a lot of the saves if required as well. It is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, game number one between True Gravity and Unite Holic. This is going to be a pretty exciting one, and already we're going to be off to a quick start here as Yopono heads on over to Team True Gravity Central Area, actually hoping to apply some pressure to this little Dratini on the side of True Gravity. The supports have actually left and decided to go top lane instead, wanting to pressure Mame on that Serena. Unfortunately, has no points to score, so will be going down as Wafu also has to back up on that Pikachu. In the meantime, though, down bottom, we saw a Slowbro getting eliminated. And again, Yopono still hanging around here in that central area, but he is playing <laughs> Being bullied out by a cool dragon, uh, his little Dratini. The thing is this, right? There's a here's the problem about when you have one of your supposed to really, or at least one of your laners to try to invade, right? That just means you're subjected to your other laners to be subjected to be bullied out as because of the man's advantage. However, in that lane itself, there is not a high pickoff break here with that kind of confidence. So that gives you enough confidence to say that, hey, even if I leave you alone, you're not going to be easily KO unless you already really super overextend yourself here. However, unfortunately, not not able to steal any of the small Pokemon, but still delayed enough. Oh, they've actually managed to catch out the Hooper there. So the blade oh! into uh. the oh, Electro Web. It was almost <laughs> enough, but unfortunately, the hyperspace hole gonna be saving the Hoopa on the side of Team True Gravity but Yopono gonna continue with his nonsense in True Gravity's central area just scouting by thinking maybe he can steal something but again that's gonna be another knockout giving another knockout to oh, that Dragon and Mame losing to Duck on the War Turtle what is happening with this matchup? This is why this is why we see Blast as being one of the few top picks where you have a Water Gun really great secure most great great poking mechanism as well pretty tanky too at the same time and let's be honest she, oh. she's not really a Serena just yet so it is still prime time for the Water to go hit to hit Especially since he Bechen. was initiating those folks. Betchen almost being taken down, just gets out of there and even uses a Leaf Blade. Beautiful double KO on the side of Unite Holic. It almost looked like it was going to be too bad, but <laughs> with some fancy footwork and team coordination, getting those counter KOs and sending True Gravity back to their base. Gonna have to figure out another plan if they want to try and get some of those very tricky KOs. But we are seeing these two teams group up with 22 seconds left on the clock before we start seeing both of those Reggies spawning up in that top and bottom lane. Let's see who gets the advantage here because at the moment, we're still seeing a one versus one matchup in that top lane with Mame going up against the Blastoise. Yopono continuing to waste the time of this Dragonair, <laughs> slowing down his progress towards that Dragonite. They're going to go for the KO on the Umbreon instead, and they almost get it! The oh. final basic attack connecting, and that should almost be enough time for this Dragonair to hit that Dragonite. Yeah, sure, but now, still able to still able to achieve their objective to try to slow things down on this Dragonair, and also stole, stole a couple of Wild Pokemon away from it, because courtesy of the Leafy for sure. Fetching, come to the line, trying to see if he can try to pressure out the Blastoise out of the lane. But again, Reinforcer coming, double serve if I'm not mistaken, coming from both oh. the slow row and the Blastoise. Absolutely relentless to his Betchen, but nice rotation coming into the, to the rest of the team. Dragonair is no longer the Dragonair, as he will be finally fully evolved to that Dragonite for the side of Akul. Get the nice KO, secure the Reggie Lackley, and other Tom's will be quite pressured out here. 
Yep, Reggie Alecki secured. Now looking to try and get that bottom objective if possible. It's a Reggie steal, so it will be a attack and special attack bonus for the Nightholic if they do successfully get this. It's going to be a Pikachu and an Umbreon. They should be able to get this in time. But what's the plan here for Team True Gravity? All of their Pokemon have fully evolved, sitting at around level 8 or 9. They might consider trying to go for some pushes, but they could also just sit back, relax, focus on their late game. If you do the comparison between these two compositions, late game is massively in favor of True Gravity. They've got the best scaling Pokemon. They've got plenty of AoE crowd control, whereas the Nightholic their comp is all over the place. They've got damage. They don't really have a lot of CC outside of Serena and that Umbreon. It's mostly just... It's just damage. And look at this. They're even using the Gatling Cop <laughs> missile on a DLR's Cremorant. They do get one KO and they do oh. get a second on that Dragonite. Actually landing onto Mame Italian. Gets stunned up and is KO'd. Must respect that Pikachu. No, here's the thing, right? Like, for them, yes. If you look, if you look at the composition-wise, sure, by, right, by time, they should have the advantage. But when you incorporate play, there is still the chance to flip the corner. There's still... Although, yes, the point differential is about maybe a hundred point ish, that kind of thing. I don't know if the flip is viable against Unite Holic, unfortunately. Great oh. score coming in from the Umbreon. And while that's all happening, we are seeing a skirmish happen in the top lane. Oh, Apollo wow. co copying a very big snipe shot oh, in the in. face, but slow beam. Yes, they do connect onto that Pikachu, so goodbye, Pikachu. They should be Mame, but it looks like they almost catch the Dragonite uniting just in time. Oh, he's actually managed to get out of them. Beautiful Unite coming from Hooper to actually save the Dragonite, but he came back instead. Okay, it's gone now. So. <laughs> Pretty interesting moves coming in from both teams. Just lots of skirmishes Whoa. for those main objectives. Pikachu, Thunderstorm, eliminating Inteleon, one of the squishiest Pokemon in the game. And Wafu is going to try to solo this Reggie Steel up. In oh. both cases, this, this probably shouldn't work, but uh, it's Wafu. Wafu does. I mean, it, does it, would, it would definitely work, but if, you, if you're asking whether is it, is it like, you know, if, like, if efficient, if it's fast, I can tell you this is not that fast. They brought Leafion down there, so they should yeah, be able God. to at least duo this. They needed someone to <laughs> cop the damage from that. Because Reggie if not, that's going to take us such a long time. Oh, good Thunder. Ooh. We'll be with CC down, but that does mean that if someone reveals location, but that's fine. Keep the camera on alive, oh. especially right before one okay. minute away to the Red Plaza. Secure the Reggie Steel, that's fine. A, lo a little bit slower than usual, but somewhat to be expected. Pikachu Waffle unfortunately gets caught up. The, the Hyper Beam absolutely significant, painful damage into the Dragon Dance. A couple of right clicks will be able to seal that Pikachu's face. So soft in the face of such an all-rounder. So soft and also still leading in those points. But I am a little bit concerned here though because that point gap is not very big between these two teams. It's just 48 points. Team True Gravity are within reach of overtaking Unite Holic and I don't see a base race being viable for <laughs> Unite Holic unless they do hang on to 50 points each and then they save this for the late game. But even then, you've got a Hooper, one of the best goal zone defenders in the game and also can just stay in the central area if, it, if a team fight does break out. It's really going to come down to some quick thinking on Unite Hall, like how they're going to guarantee this game, especially during those last two minutes. We're going to a choke point fight here, doing quite a bit of damage to the Slowbro, but remember, Slowbro, one of the tankiest defenders in oh, yeah. the game, and with the reset, just comes back at full health. Yeah, as long as as long as the Hoopa is still around, all these all these fights, it feels like it's going to be definitely in the hands of favoring the side of Team True Gravity as well. As long as as long as Zessel isn't really getting, getting gotten caught, it gives him enough space to really go for those Pokemon. With those internal snipes, I think that's going to be totally fine for them. Oh. All right, so a bit spread out here for Team True Gravity. They're not together. They're all over the place, just trying to figure out where they want to be. They've spotted out Wafu, and Umbreon's going to be showing himself, actually copying a very big snipe shot to the face as well at half health. <laughs> Got to be so careful because there is no traditional support healer in this game. They actually have to reset by going back to base in this matchup. So if you get caught out by that Inteleon, you will have to just deal with it. Mame, though, hiding in that backline bush, wanting to come and actually backstab somebody if possible. Scouted out by that Hooper. That is not committed as well. But did he manage oh no! to catch the Inteleon? Super low Hooper and Inteleon going down. A two-way backstab coming in from Unite Holic. And now it's time to try and go for this Ray Quasar. The team's coming in though. Midnight Brands, oh! Hydro Typhoon, Pokemon going down. DLR and Pikachu are out of this picture. Mami's still sticking around and even a Solar Blade to commit. Dragonite's all on his own. Where's his teammates? Where's that Blastoise? They need to buy time for the team. Yopono wasting this Dragonite's time. And Mami oh no! coming into the fray as well. Solar Blade locks down that Dragonite. We still got the. We still have Duck. We still have Hooper committing the Unite as well. He didn't even use the portal. The team is now flooding in. Unite Holic, I think they just ran out of juice. Definitely for sure. No more, no more Unite moves as well. They just need to try to get a couple of points in at the same time. And let's be honest, 25 seconds. And look, no one is stopping the Leafion. They managed to secure the Rayquaza. This is totally fine. They have a fallback. They have a plan B. But now they just need to get a couple of points in at the same time. Success with a 100 pointer here. But what about the other side? Can they try to slip it in? The Umbreon is trying to do his best to delay. But it's all too late. 100 points dives in. A possible another one as well. But it's still not going to be enough. Team True Gravity, I can't believe it. Managed to secure oh the first God. round. They have probably done it here. We even have it showing up on the screen. Oh. True Gravity taking their first game off of Unite Holic. Not a result anybody anticipated. But I have to say, the draft coming out from Unite Holic, it was a head scratcher. A lot of people probably looking at this thinking, what is this comp? What is the idea behind it? There's no support. It's an Umbreon. A lot of damage. Not a lot of crowd control. Mm -hmm. If I, I honestly wish we could interview Mame right now and say, okay, Mame, spill the tea. What was the plan here? 
it was pretty hard to tell. I think like what was really the there was only I I, I can tell there was only two things in this game that was relatively hard for you. Know, one was the fact that they they weren't as flexible because of the existence of Falcon with the Hoopa. Not able to do as much backcast or anything, or even points or try to hit from the back line, mainly because of the existence of the Hoopa. Able to reset fights, able to just defend those goal posts if necessary or bring in the necessary reinforcement. The second point would be the fact that just not not a, they didn't really have a dedicated supporter to try to wear out the damage that's being outputted from such a long range sniper like Zesh will play the Italian here. Yeah, this wasn't a wish Umbreon either. I think it's not, right? Yeah. yeah. If it was wish, at least you would have had the sustain from your Nightholic, you can poke, you can prod but at least you'd be able to have some mm. kind of sustain if you do get hit by that snipe shot. Zeshul was a pretty big issue for Unite Holic. Um, every time they got hit by him, it was half their health gone. And without your classic su healing support, you can't easily come back into these fights. I mean, we saw Yubono, he got hit by one in that late game during that two minute mark. He had to teleport back home to heal up. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have been walking around with the target on his head, basically telling Zeshul, come hit me again. Yeah, and, and the crazy thing about it, even towards the end of the fight for the record, that full five-man team fight, yes, you got you got some really nice back, you really got some really nice backstabs, right? Really great flanking with as you get rid of your and one other core player, but it's, your, your committing, it was a very costly one if I'm not mistaken, right? A lot of Unite moves were somewhat committed as well. And by the time by the time they want to try to get out of the fight or fail to take another person down, because I remember the transitioning force, after taking down the Italian, after taking down Balkan, they slowly shifted towards towards the recall right? But this is them without really, like you said, out of juice here. And Duck was still around. So much CC, Hydro Typhoon, there's also Mellow coming in to join the fray with his own personal service. Well. The, the most important <laughs> thing was, was Vulcan. You know, as yes. soon as he popped the rings unbound, that was it. The team yeah. just came flooding in after the their respawn really timers. Crash yeah, open. <laughs> because again, you don't have a classic support that's going to give you the sustain. You're mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. you're not running I know some people are gonna call this ridiculous, but you're not running potion on your team, so what do you have to reset if your team's not going to go back to base? Because they did try to run they did try to rush the Rayquaza, but since Team True Gravity is already ahead of the curve, they have one point already. They just need to win this game and they will be moving forward here. And Unite Holly, possibly, we might even say goodbye if the game doesn't go according to how they picture it or vision it. To Team True Gravity throwing everything they got to do this. And it's a very scary comp uh, composition as well, Danny. A Rock Tomb into, into Stop Power and even Icicle Shards. By the way, it is a sure hit. There is no missing that ability at all. And then the Buzz will for your top lane, a smackdown displacement, mm -hmm. massive amount of damage. And in if he gets on top of any of their back lane, because that's it, that combo is gonna pick you off. I agree. Mew is a very slippery Pokemon. Very hard to catch. Very slippery, very hard to catch. But there are times when you just can't evade it. Buzzwall. Yes. That's <laughs> it. You, you just get buzzwalled. Um oh man, this is gonna be a really tough one. But I do think Unite Holic should pull this to a game number three. They are taking this next game very seriously. They've very, got all yes. their main Pokemon. They do have some left over for that next upcoming matchup, but they are taking this next game extremely seriously. But True Gravity, I do love the response. They're not wasting this round. Mm -hmm. They're going to give Unite Holic a run for their money and attempt to go for a 2 0, which I think is very possible. I kind of feel like Unite Holic, they underestimated you know uh, they underestimated true gravity in game number one because looking at this composition i think if they ran this against another team like for example if they did this against cubby chance or mys in game number one they would never pick this for game yeah, number never. one game two if they had a one game advantage we did see this with mys yesterday sure this could actually happen but i really think they've underestimated true gravity in this series because yeah. they looked extremely disappointed after that loss yeah. no this is what i'm saying right is this very small things if change true gravity is able to just pick it up right they're just to say you know it's fine we're just gonna go all in with this Unquestionable as well. They're at their strongest. The, the momentum, the adrenaline is currently running for them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're finally in into our second game or potentially even the last game. If Unite Holic doesn't really get things back in hand, back in their control, then we might just be saying goodbye. And Kabi Chan will no longer have their return revenge match as well. I mean, Kabi Chan is happy regardless of who they play against because they're already <laughs> in the grand finals. Well, let's have a look at how these lanes are going to go uh, at the moment, shall we? So mm -hmm. Duck is struggling a little bit in that top lane, but instead we're going to be seeing the Chansey trying to go for their own little stacks against that Hooper EV combination. Not the easiest combo, but at least for Vulcan, wasting those two berries. And look at this great cancel from oh, Army. No. going to stop Vulcan from getting that little eject pad out of there. So Chansey will be going and get ambush on somebody that comes a little bit too close. They're going to show the Glaceon instead. They're going to go for the Altaria and Swablu instead. Locking the experience for oh. those teammates. And Mame X jumping a little bit far forward. DLR's coming in on that Dragonite. Have caught out oh. the Ubilisi yet again. That's going to be another KO, unfortunately, for Vulcan. Gone down multiple times this game, but let's be real. I'd rather lose the Blissey here than the Buzzle oh, or that fantastic. Glaceon. But look at this, though. Fantastic <laughs> pushback from that Dragon and catching out that Crustle. Again, so many KOs going in favor of, of Unite Holic and True Gravity. 
they are already at the six minute mark losing sight of this match. Yes, they're really trying to keep this control. Although, yes, there is some early advantage coming from Team True Gravity, but they also have their own early game competition to really deal with, it, deal with in this early uh -oh. phase here. However, Yokono, a little bit zone out and isolated all alone and control. No assistance will be coming in, unfortunately, but that's still fully fine. The team needs to prioritize it, trying to get rid of this Reggie Lecky before the rest of the squad decides to, to come in and pile in the damage. Vulcan with the Blissey. It's not going to be. It's not going to be a very easy pickup for Mami here. <laughs> Vulcan's, a little bit tanky there. Vulcan's for sure. been trying so hard this game to try and mm -hmm. get as many stacks in as possible. But I have to say, Unite Holic just props to them for doing so much to prevent Vulcan from getting whatever he needs to, to come online for this oh, game yes. number two. But so far, again, Macro Game going to be in favor of Unite Holic. They're doing pretty well for levels. Level 10 on DLR on that Dragonite. They do continue to level up in terms of experience, trying to find as many. Unfortunately, does get the disconnect. Trying to go on to Mew this time. Wafi being a nuisance on that Mew. Yep. The, the, the real challenge here for the side for Unite Holic will be the fact that how do they going to get their hands on the Glaceon? Although, yes, great coming with the Holy. He did the Phantom Forest Ooh. as well. But then again, just selling not enough for And the they Smackdown eject button into the into the Smackdown, into Betty to the 2K. Forcing on another Unite move to try to disengage. But guess what? That Unite move can only last for so long. But they didn't manage to punish the Glaceon here. And now they're trying to return the favor. Three members of Unite Holic will be KO'd here. But here comes the revenge here. Blood for blood for the Sir here, as I like to call it as well. And they will be able to get the necessary trade off here. Yep, the Rings Unbound bringing in the team in to get those counter KOs onto True Gravity. It looked like that was going to be the momentum that they needed. <laughs> fighting for the Baltic. Just random Balta just spinning. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was just fighting his own business. It's all good. Going to sit back, uh, back at home waiting to see who knocks him out. The confidence coming from him as well. <laughs> for now, for now. We've got a Reggie Rock coming in though. And they're trying to finish, off, finish this off with Wafu. And there's Dragonite. Oh. But oh, they managed to get the buff with that Hyper Beam, the secure on this Pokemon is just too strong. And unfortunately, Espeon is not one of the best Pokemon in the matchup to try and get that last hit, especially with stored power. Mm -hmm. Great for those team fights, but if you're looking for the objectives, Hyper Beam, 10 out of 10, should get those objectives. I mean, definitely right. If you're comparing between both the Crossbow and the Blitz, there's no way they can really compare or even counter right. And the beauty about Dragonite as well, securing all this objective by himself, even with assistance, without or with assistance, still pretty solid by himself. He can just do it just as well, very similar to the guard shop too. Reggie Lucky definitely going to be trying to pressure out the top. That just means the bustle will not be able to assist with the bottle. It means a form of aggression is going to be happening through that bottom side. But again, they managed to try to get the punish. Pop the fairy folly here. Hopefully it will be enough. He's trying to sustain, trying to live as long as he can. But just one uh, unfortunate KO as he was all alone on the top side. But what about the bottom path on the other hand here? Bottom path looks like they got the KO there onto the Mew with the Glaceon. All those Isaac Spears getting those connections off. But one versus three, you're better off just backing off as that Glaceon. The catch up is actually slowly happening here for True Gravity. They're not in a comfortable spot yet, but they are definitely feeling a lot better, especially up against what Unite Holic have uh. because they catch that Hooper. I have to say, considering the early game that Duck had, he has done a great job coming back into this game, especially oh, yeah. getting KOs on Pokemon such as Betchin and even DLR as well. I think if you're Unite you're Holic, you shouldn't be happy with how the game is currently going. They are not crushing the lanes. They what? are not controlling the entire map. They are not single-handedly winning all these objectives. If a 5-on-5 fight happens, it wouldn't easily go in favor of Unite Holic. They need to get those levels in, or they're going to have to try and figure out a way to sneak on in, uh, sneak on behind True Gravity and turn the numbers advantage in your favor. If anything, they need to get rid of Melon. No, I, Melon I, is a problem. I totally agree with you, right? Because there's only two ways I can see that they can really try to combat this at the regard of pit, right? Oh. The fact that a frontal assault to melt all these front lines, melt down Melon before get to the back line and zone them out, or get a flanking maneuver here, because you don't really have the best diving team oh, here, right? That kind of thing. You don't really have the necessary utility to enable your team to really dive. So easily easily on top of that Glaceon. Even if you, yeah sure, you got some gap closer with the Dragoness, but it's a very short distance. And let's be honest, Melon was there to disrupt you. You have the Bliss Assist to save the Glaceon as well. You have to really commit. It's literally a oh tactic and, Melon, and a plan. Melon, what are you, you doing? You're a nuisance. For. He's an absolute. I think even like, besides being in the hands of Melon, I think Crustle itself is just such a phenomenal defender Pokemon in this entire series. The team is split on the side of True Gravity. A lot of them are sitting in the top lane. We mm -hmm. have the Espeon down bottom, just waiting to see what has happened. And Duck is going to be guarding at the northern section of that Rayquaza. Now, True Gravity, they are behind in points. They will either need to somehow get a back cap in, or they're going to have to win this fight and take the Rayquaza for themselves. Betchen's not with the team. Unite Holic are grouped up as four. But if a fight does break out, they do have the Rings Unbound available on that Hooper. And for True Gravity, because they understand that they need this Rayquaza, they're going to start chipping away and force Unite Holic to fight into them. And oh already, no. we do get it, but it looks like it's going to be Duck to start the fight. Oh, he's alive! The forest connects as well. First Pokemon to go down is that Trevenant. Betchen trying to run away, but he's all alone. He's already committed the Unite as well. No more heals for you. It's three versus four. Melon's going up against DLR, they know where the Dragonite is. Wafu is away from his team. Boswell's coming in for him as well. Hooper's sticking around. Gonna hang on to the rings unbound. 16 seconds for Betchen. Two more seconds for Trevenant, but no Phantom Forest. Still trying to 
Try to go back and forth with a lot of these team fights as well. Nice, I mean, with a couple of hands here. Decent amount of damage, but they didn't manage to lock them out. Why? Again, caught all alone. Smackdown left and forth. Again, Melon, such a nuisance, such a menace. So what? You pop the Unite move. Oh, good save. I managed to keep him out of the safe. But it's the Rayquaza. This is the last chance. Unite Holic, if they can somehow get the steal of the Rayquaza. This might just be the play. Benjamin focusing on Pokemon instead. Oh! But it's the Glaceon on the side of Drew Gravity. They get the Rayquaza. They're ready to score. Betchen's trying to break these shields, but Duck is ready to throw hands as well. He wants to win this game. Drew Gravity. Oh! I'm about to lock this series in 2-0 against Unite Holic. I can't believe it. True Gravity coming in clutch. But of course, with that being said, with the lineup that they have, they absolutely smacked their way. Oh really, the definition gosh. of wrestling their way to dominance, to victory, and to survival up the lower bracket ladder here. Such an achievement from these from these lads here. An absolute lad. Their countrymen, absolutely proud of them with pride and glory. But that, with that being said, Unite Holic. What a game, what a performance you have delivered us. You gave us such an amazing intro into this tournament since from day one. It's unfortunate to see you guys leave at this time. I mean, I'm looking at True Gravity and I'm looking at this team in disbelief. True Gravity coming in out of nowhere. India's representative going deep in this lower bracket run, beating Unite Holic. Of all the teams <sighs> to eliminate from the competition, they beaten Unite Holic thus turning the next matchup into Team MYS versus True Gravity. This is insane. And it's definitely, it's also, it for, for some fans and for some people, this is somewhat of an outcome which not many people could have foreseen as well. And this kind of scoreline in, in this kind of manner as well. Honestly, with the kind of lineup that Team True Gravity went in, they just didn't really think about it. They just said, we had an opportunity, we had a chance to stick with it. Just pick all the strongest ones to come into the line line here, and then let's see how we can tackle it against Unite Holic here. But seriously, that buzzword, whether, whether it's been slowed down, whether it's been pressured, Feel they didn't, it feel like he didn't get pressured enough, just still able to just scale so perfectly. Duck, surprisingly, game. Duck was pressured that game. He did yeah. not have an easy laning stage. He was pressured constantly in that top lane during those first mm -hmm. couple minutes. Betchen had a wonderful time up there, and we even saw a couple times Betchen actually beating Duck in that matchup. Correct. It was later in the game, after some good rotations from True Gravity, they were able to help Duck recover with some of those counter knockouts and those pushes. But it really came down to the Rayquaza fight. It was the execution that came in. Unite Holic, I don't know what happened with this team. They didn't collapse like they usually would in those team fights. Normally it's extremely coordinated. They're, they're fine. But looking at this, they let Unite, they let, um, they let True Gravity dictate where the fight was going to happen, how the fight was going to happen, because they started poking Rayquaza. Yep. And, and the crazy thing about it as well, because of what their composition they had, they didn't